electronically, so let's call the meeting to order. We're going to begin. Madam Clerk, with our roll call. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Trustee Mayor. Present. Robert McClory. Howard Rosenberg. Here. Lisa Ruggiero. Present. Nick Smith. Here. And President Taylor. I, I am here. And our student representative, Kyle Hood. Present. And I'm Veronica Frankel. We have a quorum. All right, so let the record show that we do have a quorum. We will have our Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to ask Ben, after doing such a successful data summit, to lead us in the pledge, if you would. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I do have a couple of um, I do have a couple of uh, public comment cards, so I'll, I'll call you forward and then just reminder you have two minutes and that there's a light right three minutes. Excuse me, yeah, there's a light right there. Our first card is from Christina Mactunis. thank you for helping me. I was going to struggle. Thank you, thank you, Miss Mactunis. Thank you for coming right there at the microphone. I actually have two. So one's on the swaz and one's on nutrition. So I didn't know. Okay. Which well, we have two different topics, and I you have do. two cards, so you get three minutes, and then we'll call you up again. And, okay. okay. I just didn't know which card you called me for. Okay. This is nutrition. Okay. Okay. Unless so you want to go. The, the, nope. you, you're Okay. I, Thank I'm you. Fine. Okay. Hi. My name is Christina Matutis, and my youngest child has food allergies, and he is in kindergarten. At the beginning of the school year, I spoke with his teacher and other parents about pitching in to purchase classroom snacks because they have a snack in the afternoon. This way, each child would get a snack every day, nobody would ever forget, and I could ensure that my child could eat the snacks without having an allergic reaction. After Christmas, it was time to buy snacks again, and I was given the nutrition guidelines from his teacher. This is the new things that just came out from the state. And then I went and I asked the principal if this list was included, inclusive, because there wasn't much on this list that my child could eat. I was told that if I purchased snacks just for my child, I would not be held to the list provided. But if we wanted to purchase snacks as parents for the whole class, I must adhere to these guidelines. I would like clarification as to why we have to stick to this list if we are providing for our snacks for our children as parents. And I believe this extends to my next question regarding classroom parties. If parents are providing treats for a classroom party, since this is an occasional event, why must we stick to the guidelines provided for school meals? My, my son cannot eat hot lunch at school because of his allergies, but my daughter can on occasion, and I help in the classroom, and I am not always pleased with the food that they are served at lunch. Last week alone, pizza was served three times, but as parents, we cannot provide pizza for our children for a class party. So I was just looking for some clarification or some guidelines, and I understand this is coming from the state of Nevada Nutrition, but I think Washoe County School District should also have some say on what we're feeding our children. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And just on that issue, I'm just going to ask you that if you would get with, with, with David, our, our chief of staff, and he'll connect you with Nutrition Services, and they can provide some other information for you. I have quite a bit, but I wanted the school boards, you know, do we just defer to nutrition or do you guys have input as well that you know what for school parties nutrition doesn't matter or nutrition we always defer to nutrition that's I guess why I'm coming to the school board and not going directly to the nutrition services. Well, this is what we'll do, because typically we, won't, we, won't, we just hear, listen to the, the response. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure we get back with you and get Perfect. some information and you, so you can get an answer. Thank you very How's much. That? Thank you for your okay. time. Okay, don't go far. Oh. Am I called for the next one? In, in, in about two seconds. All right. Then okay. I'll just stay right here. Christina McTutis. McTutis. Yes. Christina McTutis, and this is on school within the school. Yes, it is. Okay. So my daughter is in the SWAS program at Collin Ranch Elementary School. I actually have four children, but I only have three in Washoe County School Districts at this time. My oldest is in the Air Force. But when my husband and I enrolled her in the program in third grade, we had to take into consideration the additional transportation necessary to get her to and from her non-zone school. 
Dad, this year, we asked for a variance for her younger brother who entered kindergarten in the fall. Initially, we were denied a variance. Then, when the principal could use him to increase her numbers and get another full-time kindergarten, our variance was granted. I'm giving you the backstory because I would like to know how much you support the gifted and talented program, the students, and their families in dealing with the transportation department, the elementary school, and the gifted and talented department, I often felt as if I was navigating the waters without a compass. I have been told that the gifted and talented department has no say or influence on whether or not siblings are granted a variance independent of whether or not there is room at the school. It is time for me to register my children again for next year and revisit the issue of a variance. I really like the SWAS program. I really like that my incredibly intelligent child is being encouraged to love learning instead of being bored in the classroom. But I do know that having two elementary school children at two different schools would place a hardship on my family. At one point in time, I had a child at McQueen High School, a child at Billinghurst, and a child at Roland Melton. So I have experience with having kids at multiple schools. And unfortunately, this time, the thing that would give would be her placement in the program. She would have to attend our zone school with her brother if he is not granted a variance. I know mine is not the only family with this issue. I would like reassurance that the gifted and talented program is supported by the board and that siblings are welcome at magnet schools and I should not have to get a variance every year. Thank you. Any questions for me? Uh, no. Yeah, please. <laughs> thank you very much. So again, we'll, we'll follow up with you on that as well. Okay. Thank so thank you for coming. Yeah, you give that contact info to, to David. That'd be great. Thank you, David. I don't have any other public comment, nor other cards. Okay. So now we'll, we'll move to take action on the agenda. I'll take a motion to uh, atop the agenda as presented or, or make any changes, whatever is the pleasure of the board. I think we had a request to have um, the two presentations that Mr. Carey is involved with to put those together. Is that right? Yeah, there was a request, but there is my understanding is that there was a, something else that was kind of time sensitive. There was a, a pre oh. so we're, we're hoping that those will be able to make that happen okay. as well before, without it impacting the other one that was already granted because okay. of some schooling. So thank you for that. We, we, we hopefully will get there anyway and it will happen by itself. Any other? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second? second? Thank you. All those in favor of accepting the agenda as presented? Signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposition? Mr. Smith, you with us? Yep, I'm with you. All right. And I know you aren't feeling well. I just want to make sure we don't forget about you. So please chime in, okay, if necessary, when necessary. Okay, the motion is carried. Let the record show that it is unanimous. Board reports, board reports. This time we will start with superintendent, I mean, not superintendent, oh, trustee, we want to start, we'll start with our, our student, Mr. Hood. Thank you for being here. Um, on Friday, I went to the data summit and that was cool to see that. And Monday I went to the state of education and it was exciting to hear about uh, the, the Mathewson. Mm -hmm group helping and then well, uh, on Tuesday this upcoming Tuesday we have a student advisory board meeting and we're carrying on with the student symposium which is the kids version of the data summit so that's that's it thank you trustee Rosario well he just gave my whole board report <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll just I'll just make it quick and give kudos to um, to staff this week amazing job to communications and and uh, superintendent Davis for the beautiful job you did with the state of education I think it was our highest attended uh, yet and uh, um, 
I was so honored to uh, announce the Stacy Mathewson grant for $13 million, $1 million a year for prevention and intervention programs. So it's, it's a huge, huge transforming um, initiative for the school district, and I'm so honored to be part of it. And then we had the Data Summit on Friday, thanks to Ben Hayes and, and, um, and his staff. It was actually, I think, one of the most enjoyable times I've had since I've uh, I was elected as a trustee because I had my partner in crime sitting next to me with Superintendent Davis and, and two of our student advisory board members from Worcester and hearing the student perspective on many of the issues we're facing within the school district is always so valuable and this guy is just so great to work with and I'm so honored to uh, sit next to him in, in all of our board meetings so uh, so so that was fantastic and it was so nice to see so many of our community members attend the data summit very very informative um, you know Ben said uh, I, you know a lot of people were saying oh some of this is depressing some of this information is depressing but you know that's part of our job that you know we have to really face uh, really what's happening within our school district and that's why data is so important to uh, the decisions that we make so sometimes it's not information that makes us feel good but it's critical information helping us guide our path um, so so that was good and then just to follow up on the Matthewson Foundation um, we had a beautiful gala on Saturday evening that uh, 20 representatives from the school district attended it was absolutely gorgeous and it, uh, all of the many raised there um, are going to the K through 12 uh, prevention initiative that um, Stacy is, is heading up so uh, kudos and thank you again to Stacy Matthewson and, and transforming youth recovery and, and doors to recovery and just to let the public know, the day after the State of Education, the announcement, um, our options staff met with Stacy, and, and I um, had the opportunity to be there. We met for three hours, planning out the, the uh, uh, integral part of uh, the programming, and hopefully we'll have more to come to the board uh, in the next month or so. So uh, thank you to everyone. Fantastic. Thank you. Trustee Smith. Okay, I, I think that was an I pass, so we're gonna go, we'll go with that. Making our way around, T Trustee Mayor. Uh, she took all my I'll turn your mic on. Except that I visited three schools this weekend, other than uh, basketball games. I did do a few of those, but you know, there's amazing things going on in our schools. It's just amazing to see. Uh, little first graders when they unlock the code and get to pronounce a word and it's just a real treat to be in our school so I was in three this uh, week these two weeks fantastic trustee Rosenberg I'll pass. okay thank you trustee Frankel thank you president Taylor um, well, I, I actually, Lisa did, uh, Trustee Ruggiero did take a lot of mine as well. But one of the things I'll add is uh, I had the opportunity to attend the directions, the Chamber of Commerce directions event. And what I really appreciated about that, uh, in addition to Chairman Kerry's incredible presentation on the, yes. the school construction needs, which was amazing, and I want to say thank you. He's, oh, there he is. I want to say thank you for such an amazing job. There was also so much relevance of all the presentations that took place for our education system, and I was glad to be there with a number of our staff, including Superintendent Davis and Deputy Superintendent McNeil, as well as, uh, as you, Trist, um, President Taylor. Uh, the State of Education as well was, uh, I heard a lot of great feedback from the community and I uh, was really glad to be at Damani Ranch, um, which is near and dear to my heart as a school, and it was great to celebrate our successes as well as lay out an incredible challenge for us, um, 90 by 2020, which I think is great. I like to set our goals high. What better goals to set but than, than high ones? Uh, the other event that I attended um, along with President Taylor was a book donation event from a, a local organization, like a business, called Us Time. And this is a unique first in the nation. We always like being first, but this is the first in the nation where a company is donating electronic books to students throughout the state of Nevada. And the event was held at Kate Smith Elementary School, and what a great event. The kids were so charged up. They had a chance to read through a couple of the books um, with staff from Us Time. Uh, Governor Sandoval was there to start us off, and uh, it was just a really wonderful event and a, and a really great reflection of collaboration between the community businesses and uh, the school district. So thank you to Us Time for that uh, donation 
and that effort to help our kids read by three. I mean, it's a really great, great, um, and if anybody with an iPhone or a computer or a tablet, whenever they have access to the internet, they can go in, they're immediately given 50 books that they can read and access. Um, and so, and they can share it with their parents and their parents can read with them. It's a really great opportunity. I also had the chance to attend the Spotlight on Success. One of my favorite things to do is to recognize our staff and our volunteers and our community members. So we were at Worcester High School. I'm waiting Worcester. for Leah. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I was pa pausing appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> pausing appropriately for, uh, for our principal. Um, and then, of course, the Data Summit. What I've got to say about that event is I'm, I'm always amazed um, at how our our accountability team, and thank you, um, Director Ben Hayes, for this amazing work, and Laura did a tremendous yes. job with the keynote. We take the data, but it's numbers and it's information, but it's they make it real. They make it mm -hmm. valuable to us in terms of putting faces on those numbers and reminding us all the time that these numbers represent students. And yes, some of it's not easy to see, but it's important that we see it. It helps guide our, our, our uh, future actions. It helps us evaluate our outcomes. I just, um, I think they know the accountability that I'm a data geek, so I really love that event, um, and I'm really glad to have been there. And I want to thank you, Trustee Ruggiero, for all your work um, on the Stacey thank Matheson um, grant. And if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have had the celebration we had last week at the State of Ed, as well thank as you. the gala fundraiser. So I really enjoyed being there with all of you. And, uh, and I also want to mention, just sort of as an advance um, announcement, um, many of you may know that the eighth graders attended the, the Career and Technical Education Program in the Signatures Academy. We had two days set aside for all of our eighth graders, or most of our eighth graders, to be able to attend a career expo. Mm -hmm. It was two days in a row. The second day had to be canceled due to a snow day. Well, the, the next, the second, the, the makeup day for that is next week on the 17th, and I will have the opportunity to actually assist with some of that and facilitate conversations with the kids about ways to ask questions of uh, professionals about careers and their and their and their interest in that so I'm really excited to be part of that and to be working with dr. Ryan on that uh, on that event next week so that's exciting I'll have more to say about that at the next meeting fantastic busy board busy board so many things great things that have already been stated the, the state of ed certainly the Matthewson event the Matthewson gift I mean a lot of anticipation building up to there's a big announcement and man nobody had any idea of just how big that announcement was going to be. It's just really been, um, I, I just feel very blessed to have that kind of partnership. And again, thank you, Trustee Ruggiero, for setting it up. Longtime friend, long time coming. Those things don't just happen overnight. I uh, can't say enough about, about uh, Sean Carey's uh, presentation at Directions. I mean, uh, it's like that was stuff that I knew, but I, I mean, I, I wanted to go up and give an offering to build schools. I mean, just that's, I mean, it was just that people were leaving, walking out of there saying, we, 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 we've got to get some schools built. We've got to build some schools. And that was because it came from you in such an authentic, such an informative, and really such an inspirational way. So I just really publicly wanted to just join with my colleagues and, and, and thank you for that. Of course, uh, to us time, a billion books statewide. I'm actually going to get it so I can read some books myself. The thing I thought was cool, the coolest about that, you can, someone across the country, someone in another place in the world can be involved in reading a book with you on us time. That is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That is really, really, really pretty cool. And although we know everyone doesn't have internet access, almost everybody has a phone. And that's all you need to be able to access it. So, so I'm really, really excited about that. Other things that were mentioned, uh, Spotlight and so on. The one thing that, that wasn't mentioned that I was um, pleased to be a part of was National Girls and Women in Sports Day at the University of Nevada on campus. It happens once a year. And it's really just a tribute to, uh, to, to really encourage and, and celebrate um, young girls and women that are involved in sports. Uh, they did a, did a really phenomenal job at the university. And there were some Girl Scouts that were part of it. And they, hit, they had a flag ceremony ahead of time. And I got hit up by a Girl Scout selling Girl Scout cookies on an app. Yeah. And I already purchased my Girl Scout cookies, but she was so relentless. I bought a couple more on a nap, and, and her mom had a square. Well, you know, I don't have any cash. Oh, we have a square. <laughs> so much for the Girl Scout coming to your door, right? And just like, so just, just bought them right there courtside and just bought two more boxes of cookies. Not that I needed them. But uh, it, was just, it was really great to see just that, just encouraging young girls to get involved, to be active in all of that. So it was, it was, uh, it was fantastic to be a part of these last couple of weeks and um, a lot of great work from our colleagues and from our, our team here at the district. Great job, deputy superintendent in place of our superintendent. The staff was involved in a lot, a lot of those things that really wouldn't happen without you. So that being said, uh, in here, as you may be able to tell, this is not Superintendent Davis. <laughs> but if she had a twin, 
It would be Tracy. It, it, that, <laughs> it would be Kristen. <laughs> Deputy Superintendent Kristen McNeil, uh, Superintendent Davis is traveling, and so we're happy to have you for the superintendent report. So welcome. Thank you so much. And on behalf of Superintendent Davis, I have just a few notes that we'd like to pass on. Um, once again, for the State of Education Address, um, we truly feel as a district that um, it was a wonderful opportunity to showcase the hard work of our students and staff at DeMonte Ranch High School, coming in with a graduation rate of 88%. We do believe in setting high expectations for our students because we know that our students and our teachers will meet us at that. Um, we always have high expectations for our students because we know that they can achieve that. So we just wanted to kind of get that message out there once again. And then also on behalf of Superintendent Davis, she wanted me to send a special thank you to our Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Pete Etchart, and Riley Sutton with Communications. For this Saturday, they presented to our Washoe Education Association on capital funding and overcrowding and our growth needs. Um, it was a wonderful presentation. And then also a shout out to Dr. Byron Green, presented information regarding student, uh, students with disabilities and special education. And he was able to articulate very clearly to our Washoe Education representatives um, the uh, unique um, opportunities and needs for, the, for those students. Um, both of these presentations were well received and our community continues to be engaged with these types of programs. Also, once again, a shout out, I think, to Chief Accountability Officer, uh, Mr. Ben Hayes and his fabulous department at our uh, data summit held at Truckee Meadows Community College. And thank you uh, to TMCC for the partnership there. Um, as several of our board members have stated, transparency is key to our district, but it also shows the significant areas where we must be able to improve. We aren't nervous or um, shy about sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, we always do that. We think that data, it's important um, because we want to make sure that we are able to see where our allocations of resources needs to go for those students and teachers and principals. And once again, just a phenomenal job to Ben and his, um, I forgot to shout out to Dorothy, um, his assistant as well for that. She did a fabulous job in setting that up. Finally, uh, we the people. So Superintendent Yay, Davis wanted me to pass on congratulations to Incline High School. <laughs> they were first place. They will now represent the entire state of Nevada in Washington, D.C. in April. So shout out to Incline, the fabulous teamwork for the teachers there, also the principal. Um, I see Dr. Gonzalez in there in the audience. She's a proud proud mama for Incline. And then also congrats to Reno and Reed. Reno took second place and Reed took third place. So congratulations to them. Sweet. Washoe County Sweet. And that's all I have. Okay. Well, one other thing. Um, if we, we want to mention, since we have, have Wooster in the audience, they received a golden football uh, from oh, the right. Crono family. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if, Le if Leah, is that right? Yeah, last week. Mm -hmm. Did you bring the golden football with you? I left it. Oh. I, I did see a picture. Uh, Fantastic. She left it at a pawn shop. <laughs> no, no. no, that was tremendous, though. All the high schools across the country that had players that played in the, uh, in the, NFL, in the NFL for those 50 years, and it was fantastic for us to have one of them. Yes, so absolutely. Great. And they're great supporters. Trustee Rosario is a Wooster grad, in case you didn't, couldn't tell. So. No. She does. So she appears to be just a skosh bias. Sorry. She is. <laughs> but no, we're excited about that, so thank you. Great job, and how about that Northern Sweep? Yes. yes. And Very the people, that. that's fa fantastic, fantastic. Great job in the district. All right, uh, we'll look at the uh, consent agenda items. All matters listed under the consent items. Um, items um, listed 3.02 through 3.05. Do any trustees have any items they'd like to pull from consideration on the, agen on the consent agenda? If not, I will entertain a motion. Is there any, for, oh, is there any public comment, I should say, on any consent item first? I don't have any cards. None, none seen. I will entertain a motion. I move that the Board of Trustees approves the consent agenda items 3.02 through 3.05. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion from the table? None. All those in favor of, of accepting the consent agenda items as listed, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Is there any opposition? Okay, the motion carries, and let the record show, JJ, that it is unanimous. 
Moving on to legislative items. Legislative items, uh, this is gonna be informational update on the activities of the Public Schools Overcrowding and Repair Needs Committee presented by the aforementioned Mr. Sean Carey who is chairman of the committee. Um, aforementioned the Public Schools Overcrowding and Repair Needs Committee. Thank you very much, President Taylor. Uh, Sean Carey, I was appointed by the Mayor of Sparks to work on the SB 411 committee. Uh, our work continues in earnest as we are approaching a deadline to complete our work. Um, we did hold last Thursday night a public meeting at the Washoe County Commission Chambers uh, to get more feedback from our public, the folks who will vote, the folks who receive your services on uh, what needs to be done. And I thought that was a very good turnout and we, we continue as a committee to be focusing in on a solution. I wanted to invite everyone to our meeting this Friday. It'll be at nine o'clock at the County Commission uh, administration building again in their caucus room at nine o'clock and uh, principally on that day we'll be hearing from the attorneys who would want to have the opportunity to advise us on how to properly structure a question so that it would be successful in your fiscal futures for you to bond it and, and do those kind of things we want to get the question correct on that regard um, the second part of that is going to be um, informative for us to continue our discussions on sales tax and property tax and that is really the remaining issue the committee has is to find the balancing act between two very difficult choices um, both are are impactful on on business and industry and families and elderly and children uh, so we, we are looking at that very carefully and our committee will be deliberating on that uh, possibly towards a resolution on friday or that will, will continue to be the focus so Invite everyone to come to the meeting. I'd be happy to answer any questions and allow you to continue on otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Key. Are there, are there any questions? We would like to know if there's any public comment on this item at this time. Okay, well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Kerry. We appreciate the, the very, very hard work that you're doing and the presentations that you make and just having your voice, a voice that's well-respected and, and the real sound voice in the community has really, really been helpful. So thank you to all, from all the 64,000 students yes. that count on what you're doing. We really appreciate that. Okay, agenda item number 6.01, consideration of approval. Uh, five. Uh, five. I'm sorry, 5.01. Uh, this is uh, an update by staff and discussion by the board regarding the fiscal year old, the budget. Let's not forget the budget, fiscal year budget 2016 and 17. This is just for information and discussion, and I see our chief financial officer, Mr. Tom Zizisky, right here, and I don't see Mike, although he's listed, so the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, for the record, uh, President Taylor, uh, Deputy Superintendent McNeil and, and board, I'm again Tom Sosinski, Chief Financial Officer. Um, Mike's working on the budget, so that's why he's not in here. Uh, so uh, just point you to the timeline that I believe is part of the packet today, and so we're on course with that timeline. And uh, so just to kind of give you a, a brief update, uh, Mike has been down to Carson City to work with the State Department of Education to get us information on our full day kindergarten and, and class size reduction numbers for next year. So we're working with them to get that information. Um, the internal allocation process for all of the district's uh, uh, positions for fiscal year 17 is underway. As I mentioned to you last time, we're a very formula driven organization. So our students determine what our teaching looks like in our school and it also determines the principals that we have in the school, the assistant principals, the custodians, and on and on and on. So we're very formula driven in that process, and so that process is underway. I mean, fiscal year 17 starts in August, but we're already working on the staffing for next year now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're waiting for information from taxation on what our, you know, our property taxes will look like. So that's information not only that Washington County School District is looking for, but every entity in the state of Nevada is looking for that data to build their budgets for fiscal year 17. Um, as you recall, all of you have been through the process. We have some pretty, fairly thick binders that we'll go through you on with you on March 7th. So that uh, Mike and the team are, are, are processing that. We're getting the PowerPoints ready to have that uh, half-day session with you. So we look forward to having that in-depth conversation with you on the district's budget, not only the general fund budget, but all of our grants and our, our three internal service funds for, for our self-insurance funds for workers' comp, property casualty, health insurance, our enterprise fund, or our nutrition services fund, our debt fund, and our, our capital fund. So we'll be going through all of those budgets with you on March 7th, so we're building up towards that. So um, let's see if I got any other things. Uh, 
working with communications on our town hall meeting that'll follow that workshop. So we're starting that process. Um, and I did want to thank Ben Hayes myself. I, I spent the, uh, the day at the da Data Summit as well. I've been there now, I think, three or four years. And uh, if anything reminds you why we do what we do, it's that day that we spend with Ben and the team to learn the good, the bad, and everything that comes through the process and uh, makes us work that much harder to make sure we're addressing those things that we need to, to get better at and uh, we all collectively work towards that. So that's my brief update unless there's any questions I can answer. Any discussion from the board table? Public comment, I don't have any cards, but certainly want to give you that opportunity. Thank you. Okay, seeing none, thank, thank you, Tom. We appreciate all the hard work balancing all of this. Now on to agenda item uh, 6.01. This is consideration of approval of the statement of acceptance with, uh, with the International Baccalaureate for Earl Wooster High School. I paused for you, Earl Wooster High School. Booster. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In Otis Vaughn Middle School as authorized International Baccalaureate um, IB uh, World Schools offering the middle years programs uh, for inf just for information and for possible action. And we see a slew of presenters in front of us led by Dr. Gonzalez. Good evening, President Taylor. I guess it's not evening yet, is it? It's afternoon. Good afternoon, President Taylor. Um, Deputy Superintendent McNeil and board members. It is um, so exciting for me to be here today, uh, but I'm not nearly excited as these four ladies around me um, to talk about the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program and the authorization that Wooster and Vaughn got. Um, they're gonna talk to you a little bit about the extensive process uh, that took place in order to become authorized. But what I wanted to tell you as the area superintendent, the thing that I'm most proud about is the fact that Wooster and Vaughn are a model of collaboration between two schools, um, a feeder school yes. and, and a high school. Yes. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> they um, have gotten together to become authorized as middle year program schools, but they've also done a lot of professional development together. And I think it's no secret that when middle school and high school teachers and administrators get together and share a common language and share common expectations, it offers a better education for our students. So I'm really proud of them. They really are a model for all of our middle high school uh, combinations to collaborate and become excellent at what they do. So I'm excited to introduce uh, Dr. Victoria Roy Roybal from Vaughn Middle School and Leah Kusher from Worcester High School. Padre, you ready? Yeah, we're ready. So we're a team now. We always have been a team, Victoria and I. So, yep. um, so middle years program took about three years to become authorized, and today, with your signatures, both <laughs> President Thank Taylor you. and uh, Deputy Superintendent Miguel, um, that will allow us to upload our document to become actual authorized schools. So we're super excited mm -hmm. the three year um, journey that our schools have taken. Uh, basically, the the middle years program is a grade uh, seven through ten. Uh, process for all middle school and high school students at Vaughn and Wooster. So it's not just the select sort of, you know, gate kind of students. It's really the, the IB requires 100% of our population to be to be inclusive. Um, Want to say a little bit about what you're doing at Vaughn? Um, yeah, so kind of the power behind it at Vaughn is every one of our students is an IB scholar, which is very exciting. Um, and part of the IB philosophy is that we are developing globally minded citizens We're using a well-rounded education. So at Vaughn, what that has meant is we now have an eight period schedule um, we're on four by four blocks and our students take math, English, social studies and science. They take a second language. We now offer Chinese, American Sign Language, oh, French and that. Spanish. Um, and as Wooster does, because the IB expects that there is a continuum of learning and so that the kids develop proficiency in that. Um, we also have design classes, which are based really around the scientific method, um, engineering design, technology design. Um, we're starting an applied project design class next year. Um, they also have to take um, either visual or performing arts. So our students are additionally in um, either band, and we've added mariachi this year, which has been exciting, um, or they're in drama and actually the visual arts class so a lot of very exciting things PE is the other PE. subject mm -hmm. they also need to take PE so all of our students are expected to take all of those subjects um, and it's been amazing for our kids so our, our staff along with my, my IB coordinator mm -hmm. my middle years program coordinator Tana Eldridge is basically our cheerleader at Wooster High School
school to rally our staff. Uh, Linda, Linda Hunt. Hunt is our IB coordinator at Vaughan Middle School. And these two ladies basically, um, so we also run the eight subject areas at Worcester High School because the IB believes in, in educating the whole child, right? Mm -hmm. So the exciting thing is, is our teachers collaborative, collaboratively seven through 10, um, they use the exact same rubrics. Mm -hmm. So basically we're grading on a continuum to show student growth. We have a growth mm -hmm. mindset, you know, not a fixed mindset. And so the idea is, is that if you ask any freshman or sophomore at Worcester High School, because this has been a three-year program, they can tell you the same rubrics that they've seen at Vaughn Middle right. School. So it's quite exciting and it's been a leap of faith for our staff uh, because they've had to learn how to collaborate at the high school level. That could be really a difficult thing sometimes mm -hmm. to share and to collaborate, but also then to take a look and putting our staffs together, whereas normally you have high schoolers looking at middle schoolers saying, what aren't you doing right? Um, and uh, But that isn't the case at all. It's just yeah. a great, it's a wonderful collaboration that we're having as well with it our staff. It has been and, and the IB has provided us a framework for all the best practice in education. So we've developed our professional development around backwards lesson design, criterion-based assessments, and again, the language stays the same. The academic vocabulary stays the same um, from 7th all the way through 10th grade. And again, the most exciting part for us is that it's for every kid in our building. So. And we haven't even mentioned the, the grading, which is a whole different uh, subset where our yeah. teachers are learning how to do standards-based grading. Bond is mm -hmm. going to a standards-based report card. We, we probably mm -hmm. won't because of the college requirements and whatnot mm -hmm. for a transcript, um, but teaching our teachers mm -hmm. how to grade on that eight point scale and the, the beauty of it all is with SLOs I keep telling my staff don't freak out because we're using an eight point rubric and SLOs mm -hmm. require an eight point rubric so guess what so we don't we don't have to make it up we're already doing it and they're like sweet we're doing SLOs yeah. I'm like thank goodness <laughs> even the lesson design the SLOs it's the same thing yeah so. absolutely so we're super excited and we're uh, just waiting for we, we thank you for your support number yes. one we believe in mm -hmm. IB sometimes being at, at one time Wooster was the only school in northern Nevada mm -hmm. so excited now to have Vaughn mm -hmm. we're going to be targeting Targeting some primary school uh, primary years programs soon, so we're coming to ask for some more money hopefully soon. Um, but we want we want to say thank you for your support. Whoa, no. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that you approved the budget. We're excited about that. Um, but anyway, we want to say thank you very much. And uh, with your signature today, uh, we're we're asking we're you to please uh, authorize our schools. So. That's fantastic. It is very exciting. It's very exciting, especially because there's every kid in the building, yes. every child yeah. in the building. Uh, comments from, from board members? Yes. Yes, Trustee Frankel. I just want to say how excited I am about this, and I actually want to say to you, uh, Vicki, uh, Victoria, it's, it's your first year as principal, and to be able to do the work that you've done to transition into that role, I want to commend you for how much work you've put into this, and I know how hard the two of you, all of you, have worked on this. So I am extremely excited for Vaughn and for all of the students at Vaughn. It's such an important opportunity for them, and I'm hopeful that down the road we can look at ways to to uh, to expand it but I'm excited to hear about the progress and to and really excited to hear about the the learning goals and the collaboration so thank you to both of you yes. and uh, you know how much I appreciate all you both do thank thanks you very much thank you Veronica. thank you trustee Rosenberg question the, um, help him turn this mic on he needs to the uh, languages mm -hmm beginning in seventh grade, mm -hmm. yes. so that by the time they're through the tenth grade, they'll have four years of yes. foreign language, yes. Yes, which will make life yes, ever so much easier for them at the university. Absolutely. So. We're actually changing the way at Wooster High School, the way that we're running uh, Spanish 1-2, uh, Chinese 1-2, um, Sign Language 1-2, and uh, French 1-2, because the kids really are coming in at a, at a higher level now. So we're actually shifting. So the nice thing is, is that the rubrics are allowing us to kind of target them on a different phase rather than on a beginning phase of, Sp of Spanish 1-2, for example. There's also a situation where two of my students are working at Vaughan and Wooster and have come back excited yes. about why didn't you tell us about this? Because I didn't know anything about it. That's why. And they're bringing yeah. it back. Yeah. And it's um, upsetting some of the teachers and <laughs> thrilling the rest of us. Yeah, I rather exciting. like it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're too welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Other, yes, Trustee Mayor. Uh, your day to night mm -hmm. for parents where you come in and you see the mm -hmm. TVs and everything, yes. that will still continue oh, yes. with this new, new grading? Night. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Tr 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 trustee Rosario. Well, kudos. Fantastic job. Thank and you. I, I'm so proud. And, you know, I hear from many of the families about the wonderful opportunities that the IB program is providing for them and the high expectations by staff. Joetta and I have this conversation all the time, especially for our kids. 
living in poverty. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities that um, IB is providing for our kids mm -hmm. is uh, tremendous. And it's uh, not only a wonderful opportunity for uh, Wooster and Bomb, but for the entire Washoe County School District. So, agree, so kudos to you. you. Keep up the great work. Thank We're you. proud of you. Proud of you, Joetta, for the support that you provide mm -hmm. our principals and and thank you so much and the families thank you yes, of course thank you thank you I mean clearly a lot of positive statements here I mean one of the things I like and you referred to it trustee Ruggiero is high expectations for minority kids mm -hmm. I mean we, we know that that makes a difference and we know that that helps to raise the bar for each of them this is a great part a great picture of uh, every child by name and face to graduation Absolutely. It, it really really is. I'm, I'm excited about it uh, other comments from other trustees any public comment I don't have any cards but certainly want to give you that opportunity uh, I do want to yes yes Dr. Gonzalez um, close by so these ladies weren't kidding when they talked about elementary schools wanting to join in with the <laughs> primary years program we have two feeder yeah, elementary yeah, schools okay. that are very interested in it and actually the middle years program starts at sixth grade and both of these schools have sixth grade so the first step might be to extend the middle years program to the sixth grade and then do some exploratory work with them to see if they really want to take on the primary years program but it'd be really powerful to have that k-12 continuum Absolutely. and um, sounds like a sales pitch well <laughs> just saying the other thing that I wanted to mention is um, every summer there is a phenomenal professional learning experience um, that board members superintendents principals and teachers are invited to which is the IB conference of mm -hmm. the Americas mm -hmm. this summer it's in July and it'll be held in Toronto Canada um, and we are going Present. We're presenting, I think. <laughs> and, and presenting but um, it is the most profound professional learning that I've ever experienced. It's phenomenal, and so I just want to throw that out Thank there. You, um, it's a it's a good opportunity to learn more about all three of the programs, mm -hmm. um, and Worcester has three programs in we their three school. Three of the four continuums. We were not the only school in the state to run the IB career related. Oh, sorry, we're the only school in the state to have the IB career related program. We were number 26 in the world for the IB career related program, and that mirrors the diploma program for 11th and 12th graders for our CTE strands. So you're going to hear more about that as well. So really broadening the scope for all students at Wooster High School. So ninth and 10th, the expectation is 100% is of our students, if they have access to the regular ed curriculum, will be enrolled in a world language and social studies freshman year, sophomore year. And then junior and senior year, we're hoping that they choose a pathway. They either go into the diploma program, which is IB's mm -hmm. version of honors, or they go into the, the career-related CTE program, which requires some IB classes as well as completing a CTE strand. Pretty exciting, and uh, yeah, exciting. we're super happy about that as well. So thank you for your support on that program as well. Yeah. So. Very, very exciting, and I see Trustee Ruggiero with her light on. Ready that means she's ready to make a motion. <laughs> Please. Uh, the Board of Trustees approves the statement of acceptance for authorization of Wooster High School and Vaughn Middle School as international baccalaureate world schools offering the middle years program. I second that motion. In, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Trustee Smith, want to give you an opportunity as well? Is that your I or a nay, sir? Or he stepped away from the mic for a moment. Okay, well then still let the record show that was the, the, the vote was five zip. It was still unanimous. Am I allowed to take a I'm selfie not. with y'all in the background so I can tweet it sure. while you sign? Uh, yes. Okay. yes, I believe we can. We can, yes, I believe we can take a moment for that. Just come on. Does it feel like, yeah, you need a selfie stick. Everyone look up. <laughs> Got it? Yes. Yeah. I'll be tweeting that. Follow us at Wooster okay, Colts. I am, I'm, actually, I'm actually signing now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Where am I signing? Right? She's okay. going to get your picture. Oh. And then Kristen's going to sign, too, so. I'll get it for you, too, there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Fantastic. Good job. Really great job. I'm really happy for you. Great job. Keep up the good work. Very nice job. Keep up. Keep up the great work. We're excited. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Beautiful work. Congratulations, ladies. Woo woo. Thank you.
Okay, we'll go. We'll continue on then with our agenda item number six point zero two. Six point zero two. This is consideration of possible action to adopt resolution number 16-001, a resolution to create oversight of capital expenditures for the acquisition, construction, repair, and revitalization of schools in the Washoe County School District by the Oversight Panel for School Facilities. This is for possible action, and we see Director of Governmental Affairs, uh, Lindsay Anderson, there before us. Yeah. Thank you, uh, President Taylor. I'm gonna be joined here by your Chief General Counsel, Neil Rumbardo. We're kind of team I'll sit down next to him, maybe, so I'm... Uh, okay. We're together. Thank you. Somebody started off standing up. I prefer to stand, but we're a team here, so we'll do it together. So uh, we are here before you today uh, with a possible resolution for consideration for adoption. And you'll remember at the last uh, Board of Trustees meeting, Chairman Sean Carey presented some information about the work of the committee. And he asked uh, the board, you, uh, to consider two things to further the work of the committee as they moved for forward in forming a ballot question. The first thing he asked was for the board to reaffirm its commitment on the capital construction scenario that the committee adopted and willing to fund the $781 million construction plan that the committee considered and uh, selected. And he needed your confirmation that that's the plan that you would commit to in a public way uh, and the, the particular schools and investments that that program would fund. He also asked you to address the concern that he has heard about additional oversight of any new money or existing money that's generated for school construction. So what you have before you is based on the feedback that we had gotten uh, from staff and what we are presenting to you today is a resolution that would uh, move forward addressing the concerns as he presented them to you. Uh, this resolution as drafted by uh, your legal counsel includes uh, the reference to the $781 million plan, exactly which schools and what, uh, and the additional core investment that, that would make. And then it also recognizes the need uh, to gain community input and feedback on that plan and be able to adjust if there are changes in future growth. Obviously projecting what we need for the next 10 years is difficult. It's a bit of a crystal ball. Uh, but this is the commitment pending any additional information that's received by the board as we move forward. And then it also contemplates the future creation by board policy of a capital funding protection committee that would be that additional layer of oversight that he asked you to consider uh, to give the committee additional comfort. And, and as he mentioned at the hearing on Thursday, uh, the committee was uh, there was a lot of public comment, very supportive in general of the work of the committee, and uh, they were close to taking action, but they ultimately decided to hold off on taking action until they had some commitment from the school board uh, in the form of a similar resolution like this before they actually decide to move forward with the ballot question. So we, uh, Superintendent Davis, informed them at the meeting that this resolution was up for consideration at today's board meeting. And if, if you vote on this, then we can take that back to the committee before their meeting on Friday. And I, I believe if you move forward, Dr. Taylor can present this information to the committee to give them uh, the answers to the questions that they pose to you so they feel comfortable continuing on with their work. So uh, that's the background information on that. And I'm sure, Neil, did you have anything you want to add? No. Nope. Okay, so we are here uh, <laughs> to answer questions. You, you may have a couple uh, public comment from some of the committee members and community members that have been following this effort, but we are here to answer any questions you may have. Let's go to the board here. Yeah, Trustee Mayor. I'd just like to say I think this is a wonderful idea. And I think uh, the more oversight on uh, funds that are being used by entities uh, throughout the county and the state, it's uh, well worth it. And I think the makeup of this is similar to the uh, bond oversight committee that I think has worked in the past. But I think this is a tremendous idea, and I'm glad you guys came up with it. <laughs> Uh, it just really is uh, showing transparency for the school district. And uh, I notice that none of the school board will be members of the committee, so it shows that we're not uh, steering the building of schools. And I think it's just wonderful. So you both are to be commended. 
other comments? Trustee Franco? Yeah, I want to echo uh, Vice President Mayor's comments as well. I think that uh, we've, I mean, I've only been on the board a little over a year, but I know that this school district has demonstrated a commitment to transparency and many other opportunities for community oversight and involvement um, in, in important decisions like this. Um, so I, too, think this is a tremendous idea, and I appreciate the staff's effort to find a solution to what we wanted to do in response to the request, but also because we have a commitment to oversight and commitment to transparency and involving the community in this very important um, issue and very important use of our funds. So um, I, I want to say thank you as well. Thank you, Trustee, Trustee Franklin. Trustee Ruggiero? Well, just to echo um, um, that my two fellow trustees and what I specifically like about this, it's, it's a little more unique than how our other advisory boards are working, and it puts in an extra protection for the public and, and, and also for the, for the school district that it, it, it allows if uh, the school board disagrees with the recommendations that come from the advisory board that um, in order to overturn that, we must have a full vote of the board and put it... Put our findings in writing so I really believe that's very transparent and those are very important steps in the process to ensure that we're getting the most um, uh, public transparency out of this process and I think that's very critical in moving forward so I'm very pleased with uh, this process I'm very pleased with the opportunity to engage with the public in moving forward so thank you I know Mr. Mr. Malloy would, would have a comment, just but just before he does, I, I just want to echo with what, what I'm hearing around the table. I mean, the, the the commitment to an even greater level of transparency, a commitment to to really doing an even better job of getting community input. I think it's really important, and, and we've we've talked about it. This gives us an opportunity to demonstrate that. And I wanted to really uh, commend the two of you for doing the hard work, and, and and my colleagues for seeing it just as that. I mean, this is the highest level of of oversight of input we can give any advisory committee, just as as Trustee Ruggiero said, no other advisory committee has it to this level. I mean, we would have to go and, and intentionally put it in writing and all so we, we don't have to do any of that with any other advisory committee. So this is as far as we are able to go statutorily in terms of saying, hey, we want to make sure that, that the recommendation going forward from the Public Schools Overcrowding and Repair Needs Committee is going to be a adhered to and, uh, and given, given the, the highest level of, of oversight and scrutiny as we move forward. And the community deserves that. So I certainly want to echo that. And... Uh, uh, we'll My only question Trusting. is, it is still board decision, correct? Yes. Well, ultimately, this, this, the, the way it works is uh, the, the, the way the resolution reads is it lays out the plan in terms of going forward. And then if, if a deviation is, is necessary to that plan based upon growth, uh, because right now their projections, as, as uh, Ms. Anderson says, is that then they make a recommendation for a change. It, com it comes as a, rec recommendation, as a recommendation to the board. If we do not go with that recommendation, we have to have a public vote. And then we have to put in writing why we don't go along with that recommendation. Again, those things are separate. And then it goes back to that committee, you know, to, to continue the dialogue. So there's a, an extra layer. I love the way you put There's an extra layer um, that we have with this committee that we don't have with any other committee. I mean, statutorily, we cannot give up the ultimate, you know, because it would impact our bonding authority, but it gives them another layer. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Rosenberg. And Mr. Malloy? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, my only comment, and, and Mr. Rombardo could possibly comment on this as well. The agenda uh, for this uh, hearing is ends with uh, uh, indication that the, the uh, oversight would be done by the oversight panel for school facilities and the resolution refers not to that by name but to the capital funding protection committee and uh, perhaps Mr. Rombardo can explain uh, that that is like that is basically the same committee that was contemplated it's the same committee as contemplated it's made the exact same way it's the exact same membership the difference is is that oversees bonds where this will oversee uh, the capital improvement project uh, at the time that the report was written that's what was contemplated uh, as staff as we developed this decided to go with a different committee at the request of uh, public Schools Overcrowded Repair Needs Committee. I think, in my opinion, the public's on notice that we're considering using a committee to determine capital expenditures for the acquisition, construction, repair, and revitalization, and therefore the agenda item is clear and complete. That would be my thoughts. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Malloy. One other thing I think it's important to know is well, there are a group of, of community members out there that are working very hard to put something together that will help move our schools forward from a building standpoint. This is a request that they're making of us, so that the conversation that we want to support those efforts in, in the most transparent way, I think it's also, also noteworthy. 
So that being said, I will entertain the motion at this time. Was, oh, there is public comment. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, good afternoon. For the record, Trey Abney with the Chamber of Reno Sparks and Northern Nevada. Uh, we strongly uh, support this effort and we appreciate all the supportive comments that you've given here today. I don't have to tell you how difficult it's going to be to, tax, uh, to pass a tax increase in this county. Anything that we can do to move that ball forward, to show accountability, to show that uh, the public will be involved, engaged, and you know, not just in the, but we're all going to have to have a, a big communication effort with uh, your constituencies, with our constituencies, uh, to, to make sure that they don't think that this is being imposed on them, but they, you know, that they have a, a say in this process. Um, this is vitally important. Uh, as we go out, uh, you know, we're forming a campaign right now, uh, a fundraiser in place. We're going to move forward. We all need to be singing from the same hymnal, if you will, and have the same points and messages to the community. While you folks officially uh, can't advocate for or against a ballot question, uh, the chamber certainly can, and, and our groups and our team will be. And as long as we're all on the, all on the same page, I think this is a great first step. And so uh, we appreciate your efforts here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abney. Is, we will take that card. Yes, thank you. Is there any other public comment on, on this item? Okay, seeing none, then I will entertain the motion if so desired by the board. Consideration of possible action to adopt resolution 16 dash 001, a resolution to create oversight of capital expenditures for the acquisition, construction, repair, and revitalization of schools in Washoe County School District by the Oversight Panel for School Facilities. Point, just point oh, I read the wrong. Oh, I'm okay, so thank you. Point of clarification. I think we just need to start with I move that. Well, yeah, yeah. She, yeah she's, she's working her way down. I'm just working. Keep I'm so working. sorry. I, I got you. I got you. We didn't read that. Okay. Yes, keep so. working. Keep working. Uh, the Board of Trustees adopts <laughs> Resolution 16-001, a resolution to create oversight of capital expenditures for the acquisition, construction, repair, and revitalization of schools in the Washoe County School District. That, that is the motion. That is. The is there a second? A second. Okay, any further discussion from the board? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Is there any up? Is aye. There any, aye. Th thank you, sir. Is there any opposition? Okay, the, the motion carries and let the record so unanimous. Say, let the record show unanimously. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, then Super, Deputy Superintendent McNeil had a sure, comment. Sure, just on uh, behalf of Superintendent Davis, she really wanted me to express the uh, tremendous gratitude that she has. This is truly, you just don't write a resolution overnight. So to thank Lindsay and her hard work and Tom Zizinski and, and Neil and our chief of staff, David, um, tremendous effort and Pete Etchart sitting there in the back and Riley and communications. This is a huge teamwork effort. So thank you very much on behalf of Superintendent Davis. Th thank you, staff. We appreciate it. Okay, going further, agenda item 6.03. This is discussion and consideration of possible action to adopt a process for appointment of a qualified person as a new trustee to fill the anticipated vacancy on the board of trustee of, uh, of a trustee in District G at large created by the resignation of trustee Dr. Barbara McClory, which will become effective March 1st, 2016, including statutory requirements, materials for making and processing applications, a potential timeline, possible process for including public input, matters regarding public notice, an appropriate list of questions and other matters uh, properly relating thereto. And this is for discussion and possible action. And our, presenta our presenters are not myself, but uh, Chief of Staff David Lazik and Chief General Counsel for the District, Neil Rombardo. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. All right, good afternoon, President Taylor and members of the board and Deputy Superintendent McNeil. So as you stated, um, Unfortunately, um, Dr. McClurry has resigned um, her position from the district or from the Board of Trustees effective March 1st. So we are here as staff um, to kind of take your direction on how you would like to see a process um, play out for the re uh, for the appointment um, for her seat. So as um, in your attachment um, letter B, um, our chief general counsel has outlined um, the requirements um, by statute in NRS 386 um, for replacing a trustee. 
Um, so that is up to you as a board, um, how you would like to see that play out, but as staff we're here to help you and assist you in that process. And so, um, unless you want to Mr. add anything. Mr. No, just as I say, simply, really all you have to do is do a notice for two weeks uh, to post and then, and then select. And, but obviously, um, I described a little more detailed process, but that's all the law actually really requires. The person does have to be from District G, uh, but beyond that, or they have to reside there, but beyond that, there's not a lot of requirements in the statute. And some of you have asked about um, the previous process um, that was used to appoint Dr. Taylor um, in 2014. So briefly, I'll just kind of walk through that. Thank you. Um, we did a publication in the newspaper solicit soliciting applications that ran for two weeks. Um, we asked them to submit a letter of intent, a resume, and a response to several questions. Um, with that, um, we packaged all of those together for you as a board, and you screened those applicants and narrowed it down to a top five. From there, you interviewed those top five, um, and each board member submitted one question along with the student representative from the board, from which you as a board interviewed those potential applicants or potential board members. And from there, um, you selected your final candidate, um, as we know her, Dr. Taylor, today. So, um, you know, like I said, we are here for you, and it's your process. The other Great, Mr. Mr. Moore. We recommend that you do two weeks to uh, take in applications, that after the two-week process runs, which we're hoping that you'll start the process this Friday, run it through the following Friday, that applications will come in. And then at some point, um, I know that President Taylor indicated to me that she would like some type of public input process. Just some consideration of right. what you may want to do as a board. And so did you want to talk to that a little bit? Well, just, just that, I mean, there, there are many ways we can get public input. And as, as the board uh, discussed, as we talked about the resolution that we just passed, you know, we want to continue uh, to be, you know, e even more transparent and have, and, and continue to open up the communication um, and the input from the, from the community. I am not at this point. I just wanted to throw it out for consideration at some point, a discussion of what that may look like. I mean, it really, at, at this point, I, I don't think I could even say this is what I recommend because it really will depend upon the number of applicants that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, some, a process that may be prudent if we have 10 or 12 applicants, for an example, may be very different if we have, say, double that number, whatever. I mean, who knows what we may get. We had 17 the last time uh, we had an appointment, and we had eight the time, or six or seven, I think, the time before. So, um, so it could vary greatly, and that may, and that, and, and that may have an imp uh, may may have us. Um, some kind of an impact on it one way or the other. So just again, just to so you're just looking at and just making sure that we're having, um, we have a, a, a good process so that those community members that may want to have them put, may want to make come, whatever the case may be, that we consider that um, after all the applicants are received, not by name, but all just right. by number. Just, just again, something to consider. So yes, that's something different. the board could adopt. Mm -hmm, just something to consider. No, and I appreciate the, the background information. Um, I haven't been on the board during a process like this, so it's always good to start with, as a point of departure, what we've done before. And I actually uh, had the opportunity as a member of the public to observe the process in late 2014 that uh, resulted in the appointment of Trustee Taylor. And I do recall that there was a great deal of public input during that process, mm -hmm. both at the public meetings, which we can look at ways to, to, to structure those so that we can get even more. I do think that's a very open, transparent process that invites everyone in the community to participate. Um, and so I actually like this process a lot um, as, a, as a structure. I think it, it's worked both in 2014, and my, from what I understand, it was the similar process that was used in 2008. Um, so I think that uh, while I, I actually share the real commitment to having this process and, and our responsibility to appoint, conducted, of course, in our open meetings with a lot of inv invitation for public input and public comment um, during that process, as we saw in 2014. But to you know, even think about ways when we get to that point structure our, our meetings in such a way that can encourage even more uh, members of the public to attend or even make sure that we say, and I'll say it now, we, we, we as regularly we do, we receive emails and comments from members of the public, and so we really encourage those as well. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Rajoy, I, yeah, I think I want to echo what Trustee Frankel said. I think the process actually worked very well. 
in 2014 and also it worked well in 2008 and two trustees actually participated in 2008. Trustee Mayer participated and, and I also participated and I think, I think that worked very well for the public. Many people came to public comment to speak on behalf of the trustee that they were supporting. And the only thing that I might add is um, that we might change uh, the location of the meeting to maybe the county commission chambers to allow uh, more people people to attend because the room is so small and I did get feedback from some of our key constituent groups today that um, you know they felt the process was open and transparent but that the room uh, kind of impeded uh, sometimes people showing up or making comments so I would hope that um, if we do have a large pool of applicants that we're able to maybe relocate and see if our partner uh, with the partnership with the county they would allow us to use the county uh, commission chambers but I think it's, it was a very well vetted process and and well thought out and did have a lot of community input so I am very 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 comfortable with this process trustee Rosenberg thank you trustee I thought, I thought you had a okay. it worked. Well, I'm not good with it. trustee mayor I had a question you said that it opens this Friday and closes the next Friday no it's not two, two weeks, weeks. Um, if that's it no I, in two weeks I'm sorry if I said that but that's up to you I, I'm just suggesting two that two it, it should be yeah, two we weeks. would be looking for a motion from you today to um, carry that process forward. So on this Friday, we would then um, start soliciting applications for a consecutive two-week period. And I think there's some uh, law requirements that you po post it in the paper one week and then the next week. Once a week once for, week for two, two weeks for the meeting where you're going to appoint. So not just the opening. Right. So it's an extra public notice for that meeting. Yes, I would, I would, I would, uh, go, go ahead. I'm saying no, go I ahead. I would just Jesse suggest that in addition to the normal newspaper and stuff that we do, that there are others. There's the Sparks Tribune and the ne Reno News and Review. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it you know, spread around a bit. That's what we did. We did that previously, but just knowing that this trustee seat is District G in Reno, um, just keep that in mind, but we can certainly do that. And then, um, of course, we'll be advertising with communications through social media and those right. other things. The, the law requires that we use a paper of general circulation, and it has to have certain criteria. Not many that okay. <laughs> I, I would um, I, I would I would add that the conversation that we're having about doing some things, whatever that might be, to ensure the highest level possible of community input is the kind of thing that I want us to make sure that we consider. Where is there is there a tweak? Maybe it may be location. Maybe it may be the time of day. Maybe it may be going over above and community. It could be it could be any kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that I, that I just want to make sure that. We're we're just being very deliberate and transparent about you know, that we want to have that kind of input from the from the community. Yes, sir, we Trustee Rosenberg. Last oh. time we got Joe Crowley here. He hasn't been out of the house in hundred years. Okay. <laughs> I'm prepared to make a motion if we're ready. Yes, please. I'll, I I'm will actually going to track the language that was used the last time. I'm oh, wait. I'm sorry. There's, there's just um, one more comment. If, we would just like to see in your motion, um, like I said, approval for us to go forward with that process. And attachment C in your packet has um, the questions that were asked when we solicited um, resumes. So if you guys are comfortable with those questions, that they are what was used last time, and we'll um, use those again unless you have changes. I, I would just wish, just before the motion, if you may, I would like, I would ask my colleagues to consider on question number four, which says, uh, do you believe, and these were the questions I answered, so they're kind of familiar. Uh, do you believe that Washoe, do you, what do you believe are Washoe County School District strengths and weaknesses, and how do you believe Washoe County School District could be improved? Uh, I would recommend, in, recommend that we consider changing that to what do you believe are the Washoe County School Board's strengths and weaknesses, and how do you believe the Washoe County School Board could be included, could be improved, because we're looking to, to, add, to add someone to the school board, not to the school district. Great. Actually, my, my response to that would be yeah. perhaps we could add a, a, an additional question, that exact question, so that we, they have the opportunity to respond to both oh. of the questions, because yeah. I think it is both an opportunity for them to contribute as leaders of the district as well as re members of this board. So I would say I like that question a lot. Rather than replace question four, I would sure. just recommend putting an additional question. That would be my, my suggestion. Uh, other 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 comment from the so from the just to be clear what do you believe are the board's strengths and weaknesses yes. and yeah, how do you, you believe the board could be improved yes yes we, we also would like just before the motion if we if there is any public comment we want to make sure we have that opportunity as well at this time any public comment 
on this item being considered. Okay, seeing. Oh, would you like some? Thank you, Mr. Hood. Um, there's no question about the kids in the school district, and isn't that why you're here? And so I, I Fantastic. mean, I would just question maybe if thinking about putting one in there, you know, because since that's, fantastic. that's the job of the board is the kids, and there's not a single question about Did kids in there. In you have a recommendation? Not at this point in time. Is that something? Is that something? Do we have to establish the exact question here today for the for this for the? Because yes, I, so I, I don't think, you that think that it includes the kids. What are the strengths and weaknesses, and how do you believe we can be improved? Because that's all about the kids. But you that the question that has yeah, specific in it? or like yeah, specifically to the student. Because I, I feel I have a suggestion. May, if I may, yeah, um, President Taylor, um, may perhaps we could add a phrase to. And I'm not sure I think you were going to create a new number five for the board question that uh, that President Taylor suggested. But perhaps we could reword question four. What do you believe are WCSD's strengths and weakness in providing quality education to our to our children? Yeah. It's add, add that as a phrase. Mm -hmm. um, and and if, if that's if that's if does that get I, I agree with you. I yeah. think that's great to I articulate that's uh, directly. That's such an obvious miss that we had. That's why you're on the board, Mr. Hood. <laughs> That's why you're the representative. So thank you for that. Did, did, was was that clear, Mr. Mumbrell? That's, that's an excellent way to to, to change that because thank it's you, Kyle. it's well, that's so obvious, man. That's 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 right there in plain sight. Fantastic. Any other? So so just based upon our discussion here 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 today, um, we're gonna we we're, we're our what what we're gonna do is give give staff uh, the direction. To begin right away, start on, on this Friday. It will be open for two weeks. The applications, uh, the resumes, and so on as submitted, and the questions as amended. Question five as question four as amended to include as it pertains to the academic success or as, as uh, Trustee Frankel uh, spelled out. And then additionally, we'll add a question about the strengths and weaknesses of the board. So then the question the the application will have six questions as opposed to five. Mm -hmm. Are are there any other recommendations? That's, that's excellent, Mr. Hood. Thank you for that. And, and, and you have again, I, and, and we said no this, public comment, right? I'm hopeful okay. this motion achieves the goals that you just outlined, oh. President Taylor. Okay. But I move to the Board of Trustees, and I'm going to identify this statute. Uh, it follows the dictates of NRS 386.275 to fill the upcoming vacancy for District G and uses the process and timeline as outlined um, and discussed here today. Is, is that there's some question two, as to what? 270. Oh, sorry. As to the, the okay, statute. two seven. Three, I'll, re, I'll restate. Would you please? Sure. Thank you. I move that the board of trustees follow the dictates of NRS three eighty six point two seven zero to fill the upcoming vacancy for District G and uses the process and timeline as we've discussed here today, with the modifications. Second. Is second. Any any further discussion from the board table? Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we move forward as outlined by Trustee Franco's motion. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, um, any opposition? Mr. Smith, uh, would you care to chime in, please, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I feel bad I'm even asking you to speak. Thank you. We got that as an aye. Okay, the motion's carried 6 to 0. Let the record show that it is unanimous. I just want to say, <laughs> in looking over uh, this item uh, in attachment E, uh, it makes reference to uh, the superintendent's uh, trustee in question number two. One, one of the things that we did uh, uh, disagree upon in following the similar process is each trustee will submit their own interview questions. And so we didn't approve these interview questions. Right. It, yeah, these the, are just provided as sample questions. So we haven't outlined that process yet. So you're yet. coming with a brand new set then? No. We didn't approve no. this. No. So in the 2008 process, um, and, I think and 2014, I, or 2014, and both, both processes, um, the questions were developed by you, the board. So these are just meant to be sample questions. These were the ones that uh, came right from the process in 2014. So in 2014, each, like I said, this, each trustee submitted a question and the student representative. Those were used in the actual interview, um, and they were not provided to the candidates ahead of time, but rather um, done at the actual interview. Okay. So we can work on that with you um, after Later. this. Well, and we, and we agreed that we would do the same process, so we'll come up with questions, and these are just samples, just examples. Yes, yeah. Mr. Rombardo, no, you had it. a question? Okay. 
thank you for that, Miss Mary. Any other commentary on this? I think we're, yeah. Mr. Malloy, are we, are we good here? Yeah, we're good. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. You have your direction and the motion has carried. Let the record show once again is unanimous. Th thank you, guys. Thank you for your work. As I know it's a lot of work to put that together. Okay, uh, now we're closing items. Any public comment? Any other public comment not related to an item? Uh, seeing none. Sam, then, did I hear anything? No. Okay, seeing none, then the, the, the meeting is, we will have a journal meeting. Next meeting is on Tuesday, February 29th, right here, 23rd. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. 23rd, ah, there it is, 23rd, uh, right here at 2 p.m. The meeting is adjourned. This is a